Hello there, welcome to another week in our garden. Now we're back in the garden this week. Many thanks for Gemma for last week, the little flower arranging demonstration and my efforts as well. Now we're back in the garden as I said, we're going to set some parsnip seed and some early carrot seed in the raised bed. I'm just going to pop a few radish between the rows then hopefully we can get the broad beans in before the weather breaks. We'll have to put a cage over them because of the pigeons. And then we need to get the pumpkin squash frame up. I have got it ready, I'll show you that later, but we need to get these plants in first. So we get the seed in, then we pop plants in. Now these are the parsnips. The ones we're using are called javelin. I used them last year, they did very well. Now the thing is for parsnip seed, what seed you've got left over doesn't usually keep till next year so I'm going to try and put all the seed in and then thin the plants down if any come up, okay? I just make a, a run with the side of the timber lot just to give me a straight run. I have put three rows in already so this would be the fourth row here you are here's the seed now i'm going to put all that lot in there and then thin them out to a good three inch apart when if, when or if they come up okay so all of them in notoriously bad germinators parsnips but we'll make something out. If we put plenty in, then we know we'll get something out of them. So that's it. I've got rid of all the seed now. Look, that's all the seed I've got passing it all in. Now what I normally do, I just push that over and then bring it down. You see, it just. Tighten it up, then I give them a watering. Label is there, it's Javelin F1, so it'll take a long time to germinate. So I'm going to pop a few radish between the rows so we can harvest those out quickly. The same way, look. We'll put two rows in, and then three weeks' time. We'll put another two rows in somewhere else. Now here's the radish. It's Scarlet Globe. It's just a Wilco pack. It says 75p on it, but they were selling them off at 25p, so I only paid 25p for the packet. There's the radish. Here. It's nice and big. You should be able to put this in. Now, a lot of people put them in with the parsnip so they can see where the parsnips are. I don't like doing that. I like my separate because when you pull in the pull in the radish up you tend to pull some of the parsnips up and parsnips don't transplant as you know. Just a thin layer, not many. Just a few. There you go, that's plenty. I'll put a label in. So we know where they are. There's a few left in my hand, so I'll put them in the beginning of this row. And then we'll cover that one up. The same way, not too much fuss, just cover them up with the edge of the timber up and pat them down. Again, they will need watering now. We'll have a few more to finish that row. Now we'll just cover that up. And once they've had a good watering, they'll be up in no time at all. The carrots we're putting in an anti's fibre, which is an early carrot. Uh, again, it's a Wilco's own brand, and again, it was on the sell off at 25p, so we've got a bargain with those as well. There you are, there's your carrot seeds, a bit finer this time. And the best thing to do with carrots, put them in as thin as you can and then thin them down again. 
I have to do it with my fingers. We're never going to get them so they're individual, but we can thin them if they germinate. Remember, there's only 25p, so we won't mind. That's it, Lord. Same again. Just push it over. Push it over both ways and then firm it down with the back of the timber. And you must water them. Best water them if your ground is very, very dry. Water them before you set them. And then we'll pop the label in the bed. Now that's six rows of early carrots in there, that'll do fine. Now we do have some bad weather forecasted for Easter. So what I've done, put an extra timber on top of the raised bed and I put the big covers back on. Yeah. We'll put these neck covers on and then if the weather does turn bad, we'll put a fleece over the top as well. But it shouldn't be too bad. There we are. We need also to get these broad beans in the bed. And I think what we'll do, we'll put one of those triangle mesh covers over them just to keep the birds off. Because you can see there's pigeons about already. Right, these are the broad beans. I've had them on that bench for oh, over a week now outdoors in all the frosts etc I have put them in a tray of water this morning give them a good soak as you see I can't hold them any longer they've got to go in now so there they are look well rooted down so let's get them in I'm going to put them in with a trowel at a trowel's distance apart that might seem a bit much, but I'm thinking they're only dwarf ones, so they're not going to get tall, so they will bush out a bit. If they get so they're being knocked about with the wind, I'll just drop some short stakes in amongst them just to hold them up. But we're putting them into plot B. Now, plot B was prepared for onions, so it's Deep down, it's got a lot of manure in there. Broad beans are low nitrogen, so no nitrogen to go on them. And we'll just pop them in. There you are, look at that. It's a nice plant. Well wet. So I won't be watering them as I put them in. Lots of stones in my hand. I'm just going to go around. Good heavy soil, they like this. And then I'm going to go that distance lot. A good depth. The soil is very, very wet as well, so we should be all right. Make sure they're well down. There's a bit more on that one, I think. There you go. Break the soil round and take the soil to them. Then just tidy up along the road. You can see it's very, very heavy, but they've got to go in today. Push that down. And they made lovely plants and well pleased with those. I'll finish this row and then I'll come back to you when they're in. Right, as you can see, we managed to get all the broad beans in. They have been hardened up and as long as we don't get too much wind on them, they'll be fine. Now they are broad bean, the Sutton. Now, this is the arch that we use to grow the squashes and pumpkins on 
I've brought it out the stables, I've got it ready for putting them, I've screwed the legs back on and then I'll just show you the holes we're going to put it in. These are the holes I've dug ready to put the arch in, as you can see I've gone right down to the clay bed. I've kept the clay soil separate so I'll put that back in the bottom of the hole. So it's turning a bit chilly now so I think we'll come back to this when I've done it and we'll go up and have a cup of tea. Hello everyone, we're down in the garden on plot A and I'm putting the squash arch up today. I need to get up today because I do believe tomorrow the weather's going to break a little bit here. So I'm going to press on. What I've done, as you saw before, we've dug the four holes and dropping the frame in and I'm putting props on. I'm getting it somewhere near level but not dead level yet. We have to wait till we've got the top on and put the clamps on and then level it and then we'll backfill etc and get it screwed in. Now that's the two sides up. They're not quite in line, they're not level but they are the right distance apart. So now hopefully I'll lift the lid on and put the clamps on to clamp it tight and then adjust the make sure it's nice and level. Right so that is the top lifted on and there's no outtakes I did it in one which makes a change. Now I'm going to put the four G clamps on and then start and get it nice and level. Right, that's one clamp on. I'll put the other three on and then I'll put the spirit level on all round, make sure it's nice and level. Then we can fill the holes up. Hello there, Friday today. Now we just need to catch up on the squash arch and the greenhouse today. Now we've had some really bad weather so we haven't been able to get down here but I did actually finish the arch so we'll show you it finished and I'll talk you through it. As you can see it's all in nice and square and what I should do before I plant the squashes and pumpkins in I should put bean net on it as well just to give them a bit more something to get hold of to climb up. Right, well, we'll just nip up to the top to the greenhouse now and I'll just show you what I've been up to. Right, we're up in the greenhouse now, rather wet inside. I'll just show you what I've been up to while well, we've had some bad weather. We've had frost every morning this week and everything covered in fleece. And in the daytime we've had rain, so I've been in here working so show you what we've done all these up at the top are all the fuchsias that we overwintered i've potted them up some have gone into raw large pots but they are breaking so they're still with us some are doing better than others but they're fine i don't think we've lost any at the moment i can see green shoots on them all I put them at the top and just keep the compost moist until they start growing then I'll have to increase the watering. On this shelf, now everything with a white label in is a trailing fuchsia and those without are the uprights. These are the smaller plants but again they're doing very well. They're all showing, showing a bit of colour so they'll be fine especially if it's a nice warm day and they'll dry quick. I just give them a mist in as well which helps the, the buds break on the stems. A few of the, these are a few of the geraniums that I can't get on the top shelf. I've had to put them there for now. As you see some are a bit small but they're all with us so we'll let them grow. These are the busy lizards that I potted up in the centre is the main seed tray, still a few more coming so I've left them there just to let them grow a little and then we'll pick them out. These seedlings here, they're the celery, two varieties, they're a bit not quite ready yet so we just leave them there to grow on a bit. 
I put a tub of the salad bowl lettuce so Diane can cut it once it gets up here that'll be fine that'll be growing on for some time this is a tray of little gem lettuce the first tray pricked out they'll soon be up in here and then we'll take them down and put them in a frame I think in the green tray two varieties of the tall remain type lettuce take a lot longer to grow so we'll have those in and out and then these will follow nicely now because we're so short of room in here at this time of year i've had to put the temporary shelf up this is actually the the shelf that we ripen the onions on so i've had to borrow it out the out of the store shed and i've just put it on some brackets so hanging basket brackets actually and these will take these geraniums until they're ready. It's nice and warm up here, they seem to like it. Okay. I put them in trays so when I water them it's not dripping all over everywhere below. Okay. A few more geraniums in the corner that I haven't quite got room for on the shelves. There's a, a tray of petunia cuttings there, they're doing fine. Not We've lost quite a few, I think that was the cold. There's the second set of the cabbages and the cauliflowers that will follow the ones we've already got in. These are leeks, a few out into one of these 84 trays that we got from gardening naturally. I shall fill this, there's two varieties there's one, and the other variety not quite ready yet so I shall, when I can, when they're ready, um, that'll be enough leeks for us this year. The Red Baron heat treated onions have arrived this week so I've started potting those into trays. That's just one tray, the rest are over here. As you can see I put little bits of wood in the corners in the daytime so we get an air circulation. If you don't do that they'll just steam up and you'll get a lot of mildew forming or bostritis if you like on the plants. We've done the peppers that do centres and some have come up i'll show you those in a moment but what we had left i've actually set again so all the peppers are in and this is um yellow bell that we got from brown so i put that in see how they get on is the other tray of the leeks that we got this is sultan's in f1 so i popped it into the propagator just to bring it on a little bit as you can see the tomatoes that we put in this tray from gardening naturally I've taken the top off now they're beginning to pull a little hence the corners put on to slow them down a little I think we've actually got one which is there two two that hasn't germinated so that's no problem next time I see you these will be potted up the other propagator, these are the peppers that Stu sent, there's quite a few coming up that I didn't think, I don't think that row is but we'll still give them time to see if any more, enough will come up in these for us to grow peppers out of them, so well done Stu, we'll get some. I put this thermometer here just to make sure I know the temperature in there and it's at 20 so that's fine. So they're all four trays of tomatoes, five trays of tomatoes. I put the first of the butternut squash in. These are two pots of Busy Liz's seed we had left. I didn't want to keep the seed so I set it and they'll catch those up all right. This is the celeriac. It's monarch. They're doing fine. You always need a lot of heat to get going. That one is the last of the tomatoes and I've just put that there this morning I'll take that into the house that's cress for the salads we grow mustard and cress for the salads we'll put all the squashes in next week hopefully there'll be some more room in the props these are the cucumber femme spot I got six seeds so I got six plants although that one doesn't look very well but I think it's all right at night they actually go into the propagator and come out in the daytime. That's the lettuce. There's still a few left. I'll try and use them, but you don't want too many at once, so they'll probably be scrapped. Now the onions have come, 
and we've also bought turbo onions and put those in they're not heat treated but the red baron were heat treated that's the rejects as you can see we won't have those we'll just show you that anything that looks a bit squidgy or a bit long i've rejected so you see a nice onion and when you look at it you find that it's got mold on it so or oh, this one that's shooting i don't want that and it's soft anyway so but you think the until you go through them you don't know you don't want that you see soft that will make a it will make an onion but it'll be a long onion which is not very not much use and it's soft anyway when you are checking them just remember if you're squeezing them don't squeeze them too much or you'll bruise them and they'll rot anyway that's far too big look that can never make anything it's the wrong shape right if when you're planting them if they've got loose skin on them just rub them off and what a fine one just to show you. this is a bit squidgy but i'll show you if they're like that i just take the top bit off as well just pull it then if you can take a bit of the loose off better better still it helps the moisture get into the bulb that is very soft now having sorted through and selected off what we want now these are the onions that we're going to grow i pop them into the cells a biggest cell i don't want them too big because the onion will tend to stay if you give them a big cell they'll want to stay in that rather than get the roots out into the soil so as soon as they start showing a bit of green we'll cool them down and push them straight out into the garden if the weather turns bad then we'll put that big fleece over them as well right now these are some of the brassicas we've started I'm only doing them in small batches so we can get them through uh, so we're not getting too many at once I'll just take you through them if you want they're actually Brussels sprouts they are so all that lot will be the Brussels sprouts cabbage sherwood summer cabbage killersol that'll be autumn there's Nothing showing in the boxes yet for the potatoes, just a few weeds coming up. At the top here, it's mainly brassicas. So there's the cauliflowers, purple sprouting, they won't be ready for another year. At the back, we've got the Romanesco, which are those two trays doing rather well. So you've got the kohlrabi at the back, some more cauliflower. Then these are the onions we've grown from seed. They're doing quite well. At the front, there's two trays of mainly fuchsias and saffinias. They're all colour coded, the saffinias. So Diane, when you get bigger, Diane will be able to put them in the pots. That's a chrysanthemum, like the oxide daisy, but it's a chrysanthemum. I want to plant that around the garden. And then here, that's calabrese and that's a bit of spring cabbage greyhound that will be ready oh, eight or nine weeks we'll be cutting that now as you can see the, the little greenhouse is full but as soon as the weather improves a little bit and we've got the beds prepared which we'll do next week we can get some of these plants in obviously they'll need a day or two out in that little coal frame table just to harden up and then we'll have them out and we'll start filling the garden up so that will be about it for this week in our very overcast good friday happy easter to everyone now many many thanks to those people who have subscribed and thank you for watching so hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.